and welcome back to our series on night wakings. And in this episode, we are going to talk about those long wakeful periods in the night that some of you I know have to endure. So stick around because we're going to look at why these happen and what you can do about it. Okay, so long wakeful periods in the night, what am I talking about there? Some little ones will go to sleep, they'll sleep really well for a number of hours and then they wake up. But they don't just wake up for a bit, they wake up for like three hours. And it has parents scratching their heads like, why, what's going on? Why are they awake? What, what, what do they need for that length of time? And quite often when we see this, they're not actually upset, they're not seeking anything in particular, and there's no obvious reason for the waking. Like it's, they don't seem hungry, they don't seem like they're looking for their parents or looking for any help, and sometimes they just wake up and they're quite content. They're quite content and happy, they're just lying there, sometimes babbling or cooing if they're a baby, or maybe even sort of chatting or singing if they're a bit older. They're just awake for no real reason. And sometimes if they're awake for long enough, you know, we're going into hours, they might start to get a bit fussy because they're getting a bit fed up. They want to be back asleep. They don't really know why they're awake. So is this sounding familiar? Have you experienced this with your little one? If so, let's see if we can overcome this once and for all. Why does it happen? There are a number of possible reasons for this. And there are even some medical reasons, which I'm not gonna go into here today because that's not my job. If you think or suspect there could be a medical reason or you've exhausted all the possible behavioral reasons that I'm gonna talk about, then definitely go and seek some help from the relevant medical service that can explore that a bit further for you. But when it's not medical, if it is behavioral, what could be causing it? What might be going on? One of the possible reasons, weirdly enough, can be overtiredness. So it would be really easy to look at a little one who's just wide awake and doesn't seem sleepy and think, they're not tired. They're just not tired. They, maybe they've had too much sleep in the day. Let's, let's cut that nap out. Or, oh, maybe we should put them to bed later. And it's really easy. It's almost like the obvious answer. But be so careful with that idea because quite often this wakefulness in the night is the complete opposite. It's because they are overtired. So why would they be awake if they're overtired? Surely, if they're overtired, they should be zonked out. Mm, yeah, you'd think so, but that often is not the case. They, um, they wake up because of the amount of stimulation they may be having. So if they're having extra stimulation because they're awake too much, so perhaps they're not getting enough daytime sleep or nap time, or they're awake too late and not going to bed till too late, for whatever reason, they are consuming more daylight, activity, engagement, um, possibly screen time, um, all kinds of stimulants that could be causing this. So they get tired, they fall to sleep, but then they suddenly are like, oh, I'm awake again now. And then they just don't feel sleepy. And it's probably happened to you. You've probably experienced this yourself. It happens to all of us at times. And you're bound to have had one of those nights where you wake up and then you're like, oh, I just can't get back to sleep. And it can be because you know full well that it's not because you're under tired. You know you're tired. And you're like, why can't I go to sleep? And it could be because you're overstimulated. And that can also come from dietary reasons. You know, there could be things, things like too much sugar or caffeine in the diet. And so I've seen caffeine do this in a way that, yeah, sure, you get tired, you go to sleep, but it's still there, it's still in the system. And then when it kicks, um, it just you, it wakes you back up again. And you're like, oh, I can't get back to sleep, can't get back to sleep, because it's still there in your system. So consider dietary things as well. Is there caffeine, sugar, other stimulants that are going into that diet more than maybe necessary or it could be that the circadian rhythm is a little off whack and what do I mean by circadian rhythm that's your body clock it's your internal body clock so if your baby or child or even yourself if you are not quite on track with when it's day and when it's night and when we should be sleeping that could be a reason why you're awake in the night you could actually be awake because so babies do this sometimes and young children, they go to sleep, they sleep for a patch of time and then they're awake. And it's a bit like that sleep, the beginning of the night was like a nap to them. And now they're awake thinking, yep, I've done that sleep. Now I'm awake again. I'm going to be awake for a while. And then they're awake for ages and then they go back off to sleep. It was like, it's like it's daytime. 
It's like that was a nap, this was an awake bit, now I'm going for a nap again, and the circadian rhythm is off. Why is the circadian rhythm off and what can you do about that? Start to look at their patterns in the day. Are they in a good rhythm? Do they have a good rhythm of wake up, play, sleep, wake up, play, sleep, and so on? Are they um, are they in a good rhythm? Are they getting their daytime sleep at the optimal intervals for their age and developmental stage? Are they, or are they not? Are they just awake all day long or not getting enough sleep or vice versa? Are they asleep all day long like it's nighttime and therefore they're napping? in the night. So it could be a body clock thing and it's worth looking at that and just gauging where they ought to be for their age. Not every child is going to be exactly the same but there are ballparks to work to that will really help to guide you. And so those are all really good reasons maybe why it could be happening and reasons worth exploring but what should you do in terms of responding to it when it happens? Because if we address those reasons why we might be able to overcome them. Great. But in the meantime, when your child is waking up and they're awake for two or three hours in the night, what do you do? What do you actually do? Do you try to get them to go to sleep? Do you leave them to it? Well, the truth is it depends because if they're content, if they are awake but content and happy and they are not seeking your assistance, so there's no kind of I need you kind of cry coming from a baby, just cooing, maybe a bit of fussing mildly, but they seem okay. Or a child that's a bit older that could call out, but they're, not, they're just lying there and they're just awake and you're aware of it for whatever reason. If they are content and they don't need something from you and they're not looking for your help, then don't intervene because your attempts to go, oh no, come on now, you shouldn't be asleep, back to sleep now, back to sleep, you're just going to create more stimulation. It's not, they're not going to be, they're not going to just go, okay, <laughs> we'll go back to sleep then. They're obviously trying. So staying back and not interfering is more helpful. Of course, if they are an age where they've perhaps turned lights on and got up or created an environment that's no longer conducive to sleep, absolutely you need to pop in, reset, night time, lights off, lie down, well done, and give them all the signals that it is time to be asleep, it is time to still settle back down. A great aid in this can be a sleep-wake clock by having one of these clocks that shows them night and day. That really can help because you can just point to it and remind them and make sure they're aware when the clock says this, we go to sleep. That can help them and act as a good trigger and reminder as well. So if they don't need you to respond, hold back. If they do need you to respond, respond quickly and calmly and quietly and in ways that I described in my previous video. So if you missed that, go back and watch it and I'll explain everything there for you. But ultimately, just be consistent with that response. Don't have a response where one night you ignore the thing, the whole situation you ignore, and the next night you go, oh, come on, why don't you come and sleep in my bed with me? And the next night you go, you're not sleepy? Oh, no, why don't we read a story then? And the next night, you know, it's just a whole mixed bag of responses. That will prolong the problem. They won't know whether they're coming or going. They won't know whether they're meant to go back to sleep, whether it's okay not to, whether, ooh, can I change beds tonight? Just keep it really clear. This is the time of night. This is where we sleep. This is how we go back to sleep. And this is what you're going to get from me. Nothing more, nothing less. Just keep it simple and keep it consistent. So I hope that gives you some tools to understanding why your little one might be waking up for a long time in the night, how you can deal with it, and hopefully how you can also overcome it. Give us a shout if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will see you next time in the next episode. Take care and sleep well. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.